Hello, my name is Marcus and welcome to Motion Graphics and Cheese. Today we're going to be creating this anime style lightning effect as you can see here across the screen. It's got some nice organicness and what have you to it. So uh, let's get started. All right. So first of all, I'm going to start a new composition by clicking on the little square thing over there. We're just going to call it lightning and say, OK. All right. So uh, we can uh, take the pen tool here at the beginning and click on the viewports. If you don't have any other layers in your composition, it's going to automatically generate a shape layer. So that's fine. And then we click on the other side of the screen. So the, uh, we have one line. If it uh, curves like you saw mine did, you can just out click on the, on the mask points and it will straighten that out. It will remove the control points. So if you go down here to the shape layer and under contents and shape, we can delete the film because we don't need it. We go down here to the stroke and maybe we take it up to let's say 50. Nope, not even close. 130. Let's take it up there. All right, so now we have our nice line in the middle of the screen. There we can click on the add here and go to trim paths. Now with trim paths, you can basically offset or animate the different paths that you have generated in the yeah, in that shape layer. So, let's take it all the way down to zero and then press on the stopwatch to uh, make a little keyframe here. Let's go three, four frames into the future, into the future, and uh, set it to 100. So we have this nice fast line going through the screen. Now, we can click on the stopwatch of the stroke width and then animate that all the way down in, let's say, half a second in the future. Whoa, that's way too slow. So let's take a little bit closer here. There we go. Something along those lines. So now we have that initial lightning. We can apply a turbulent displacement. You can either search for it over here in effects and presets, turbulence displacement. Or if you get a hold of the FX console from Video Copilot, I will share a link in the description. You can press Control Space, and then this little uh, square thing, bibbidi bop, comes up. And then you can basically search for effects and apply them to the layer instantly. So I'm going to be using that throughout this video. So let's say here, we go to the first uh, keyframe where it has gone through the entire screen. We set the amount to zero, and then we animate it. Go to the last keyframe here, and let's say 250. It's probably extravagant, but uh, we have to start somewhere, don't we? So now we have this. It starts to distort nicely. Then we can apply another cool effect called Roughen Edges. Now this is an awesome effect that I use way too often. It erodes the alpha of an image. As you can see here, and there are different types you can play around with. It is quite frankly awesome. So I suggest that you play around with it. So I'm going to increase the edge sharpness to, let's say, 5. And let's say the border to 0. We animate this bad boy. Then we go into the future by pressing K. If you press J, you go one keyframe back. If you press K, you go one keyframe forward. Very practical shortcut. So I'm setting this to 20 here. So I can see it starts to erode. Now it is a little bit too small in scale. So let's take this all the way up to 350. Is that enough? Is that enough? It's acceptable. It's not great, but it's acceptable. Something along these lines. So if you press F while having a layer selected, it will collapse all the properties of the layer. And if you press U on a layer, it will show you all the parameters that are keyframed, which is very practical. So if you go over here, you can either by selecting a keyframe and going into the graph editor, we can actually offset or animate the influence of a certain keyframe in an animation. As you can see here, you can decrease the speed all the way down to zero and increase or decrease the influence of that keyframe. So let's just take it all the way down to zero and set it to influence 100, which means that it will go, which means that it will change the values let's take this one it will change the values very quickly at the beginning 
And the closer it gets to the end, the slower it applies the resting values or the, the residual values that are left to apply. So we can do this for every single keyframe. So if you, the shortcut for this is actually also Control Shift K. It's the exact same uh, numbers and parameters we just played around with, but we can just do it with numbers instead of with the graph. So the exact same, uh, speed zero, influence 100. Same with this, speed zero, influence 100. Now we can see it starts to have a little bit more of that electrifying deliciousness. We can even apply, let's say, some more complexity to the turbulence. Maybe that's a little bit weird. Uh, we can play around, probably some twist or something. Nah, let's just take the original one. All right, something along these lines. So now let's give it some oomph. Let's apply one of them glows, yeah? And let's change it to A and B colors. Let's change the glow threshold all the way down, which means that it will apply the glow based on lower luminance levels. Let's just set the glow radius to 30. Now we can change the color to cyan and a dark blue, something along these lines. Duplicate that bad boy and apply an even darker blue. Something like this, nice and electric. All right, so now we have at least the basis for it. We can always, this is quite uniform. So let's apply another rough and edges, which I can't seem to write. There we go, rough and edges. Let's take that all the way up. There we go. Let's set it to spiky. Now this will create some really nice spike uh, as you can see across the entire line. It makes it more anime-ish, a little bit static, but we can change that quickly by alt-clicking on evolution and, and uh, writing time times 1,500. So this is an expression where you basically change or add functionality to whatever property you are on or selected. So right now I'm saying that whatever time it is, multiply it by 1,500 so that you can see it actually animates over time. It's no longer static. So it's a little bit more electric. Bam. And if we look at opacity, because now we want it to blink, right? We want it to blink at the end like it did in the other one. And I've done this with an automatic expression. So if I press Shift U to show me all the properties that are animated, we can now out click on opacity. Let's look here. First, we'll create a wiggle. Now, wiggle is an awesome expression that basically it wiggles, <laughs> it changes the values up and down based on the values you give it. So the first parameter is how many times per second it changes this value. And the second parameter is how much it changes that value. So now we have that little thing to wiggle with. We can create a new parameter called, or a new variable, sorry, called thick. And then we pick whip all the way up to the stroke width. So now it's linked to the width of the lightning, which is really awesome. Now we can use this as an information thing. So now we want to ask a question. If thick, as you uh, see here, uh, the variable we made, if thick is less, there we go, less than 50, and it is more, yes, more than one, then do something. Do something within these brackets. As you can see here, if it's not either of those things, then please keep my value. The value is going to take literally the value that you've written in this property. 
uh, originally. So, so within this, if this is true, if the thickness is above 50 and, I'm sorry, below 50 and above 1, then I wanted to ask another question. I wanted to ask wig, if wig is above 90, then please give me 100% opacity. Else, whoops, I made a mistake there, my apologies. Else, I want it to be zero. So this is, so whenever this stroke width goes below 50, it's gonna start to blink. Right now, it only blinks almost once here, so apparently we're not doing it often enough. So let's say we can do it like 30 times per second. So now it starts to blink a little bit more often. We can even change how much or how little, my apologies. So see now it starts to blink and it's, uh, this nice little blinking effect at the end, which really adds that electricity feel to it. And you can always change these parameters to fit whatever you want. You know, you can uh, switch these values until you're satisfied. And the cool thing is a lot of this, a lot of these effects you can apply to smaller versions. So let's click on the pencil again and let's make a smaller mask here. A little bit smaller mask. Let's call it lightning small. Then we go down to the properties again. We take the fill. We get rid of it because we don't need it. We animate the path. Let's go over here and maybe let's turn off this big lightning so we can see what we're doing. Now we take this little one. Whoopsie daisy. If you click on the path, you can edit the points. So you click on these here points and you enable your pencil again and I'll click on these points to get the control points available. Whoops. I don't want to close the loop. I just want to edit the control points. Something like this. It's not great, but it makes a point. So something along these lines. Same as before, select the keyframe, control shift K, set the speed to zero, influence to a hundred. So it does that nice curvy thing. So now we just go back to our previous layer, click on one effect, control A, and then control C to copy them all, go over to a new layer and paste it. And if you remember from before, press U and U again. Ah, we already had everything, my apologies. So here you can see all the animated effects. So right now, some of the effects are way too heavy so that we can actually not see what's happening. So if we disable the roughened edges, we should be able to see what's happening. There we go. So, Chevrolet displacement is clearly too much. So let's take it down to 150 maybe. Maybe, but also the scale. Let's take it down to like 30. There we go. And I can see we forgot to animate the stroke. So if we go under stroke, we can just say stroke width, let's say 20. Click. Go to the last keyframe and set it to zero. We can select the keyframe, control shift K, zero, 100. We can even change the, the caps. So instead of squares, it becomes round caps. It's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Something along these lines. Now we can enable the original. Oh wait, let's just take the spike one. Let's see. We can even click on this thing. So if you don't want to see the UI on your screen while you're working, you can press Control Shift H. That will hide both the masks and everything GUI related. So it's a lot easier to see what's going on. So let's say here, let's say, let's take this down to 20, clearly not enough. Five, eh. Eh, not too bad. A little bit erratic. But that's probably because we're animating. So you may have noticed if you press U, you see all the keyframes, but you don't see the expressions you've written. So if you press E twice, then it will show you the expressions. So we can take this down, let's say, all the way to 150. 
And right now, this doesn't have that opacity expression from before. So we can paste that up to our new effect. And it should adapt, except for the fact that, of course, this is already under 50. So we can say if it's under 15, um, let's say this to 40. Maybe 20, maybe increase it instead of decrease it. You can play around with this until you're satisfied and you get uh, the effects you want, you know, and you can play around with the spikiness as well, make it more spiky. And the cool thing is that this changes the shape regardless of where you put it on the screen. Not regardless, it changes where you place it on the screen since it's vectorized. So you can just rotate it and move it around, maybe offset it a little bit, duplicate, move, uh, rotate a little bit more. Where'd you go? This one here. Uh, rotate a little bit more. Maybe select them all and offset them in time. And now we have this nice little uh, changing electric things that are animating. It looks a little bit hand animated, but it's not. So it's nice to have these somewhat semi-procedural things going on. Um, I would say that is somewhat it for the first part of this uh, tutorial. I mean, you can always, uh, if you're wondering how I did this, it's basically just a solid. I just went up to layer, new, solid, made a white solid, and literally just drew a mask. And I said that, uh, or I just shortened it to one frame or two frames. You There's a shortcut, Control shift d if you want to split a layer, and then you can delete the top part. And you can maybe shorten the lower one so you have this nice little flash before it goes off. But it's nice and easy, you can always make new shapes or whatever you want. So I would say this is the first part of the tutorial. In the next part, I will show you how I animated all these letters in a semi-procedural way. They're actually being animated by just one layer that is going towards the right. But everything else is happening a little bit the same as in the lightning. It's just taking the expression and randomly uh, applying effects on and off until it reaches the end. Which is taking a long time, apparently. But uh, hopefully you can see this nice uh, the randomness of it. But yes, I'll see you next time.